Thanks for coach, uh, joining us tonight, Head Coach Chris Limonis. Coach, again, congratulations on the national championship. We're going to uh, <laughs> we're going to lead off with a short statement from you, and then we'll open it up to questions. Coach, when you're ready. Um, what an awesome night. Um, our kids played as free as you could be on the biggest stage, from the pitching to the defense to the grind of having to be one of the best pitchers in college baseball history and the defending champions. Um, so proud of them. And it's <clears throat> so awesome to bring, that, bring back the trophy to Starkville. It's just um, our community and how much they love their baseball. It's just uh, it's pretty special. And um, we just have, we have a great administration here. John Cohen, our AD. Um, he's a big part of this and everything that he does and everything that he's done in the past. Um, I, I want to always reach out to Coach Polk because Coach Polk is uh, the one who built this and started it. You know, we run out there and play in front of those big crowds, but Polky was a big reason why, and all our former players too. Um, it's just this is a lot of years in the making and um, a lot of fun, and I know our fans will enjoy this. Yeah, we're going to open up the questions. Again, please state your name and affiliation when asking a question. First one tonight is from Robbie Falk. Coach Robbie Falk with Scarborough Daily News and 247 Sports. From the very moment you came to Mississippi State and talked to the press, talked to the fans, you weren't shying away from that national championship goal that you wanted. Now that that's been realized, what's that mean to you and to this team that's fought for that the last – uh, three years that you've been here you know um <clears throat> you know you lose the first game of this series and you're sitting there and you're you know you know how bad our community our our school our program wants this trophy and um you know we talked about it i think it was saturday night we were having to play texas how it wouldn't be easy just hasn't been easy and when you're going to do something legendary for the first time um it was going to have to be tough and um it's, it's pretty surreal right now but um, the reason we are champions is we just have a really tough, resilient group. And, um, man, it, it, it's been built over time. It's, it's the accumulation of the last three years. And um, it's just been a lot of fun. Next question will come from Nick Suss. Chris, this team probably went through more than any other team would have had to with the COVID restrictions and, and everything you guys had to go through this year, just for the team to, to make it this far and, and to get the first championship in this season, how special does that feel? Yeah, it's awesome. It's, um, it's been a long year. It's just been a long year with COVID. It's been a long year with the restrictions. Um, just been really tough. And uh, um, to see our guys come out the backside of this as champions um, is, is very special. Our next question will come from Steve Robertson. Steve Robertson with jeanspage.com. Uh, Chris, a couple years ago, we sat in a room in this building and Jake Mangum tearfully said that you would bring Mississippi State its first ever national championship. Looking back on that moment now and maybe the disappointment then, what does that mean to you to know that you have fulfilled that expectation? It's pretty awesome. Uh, I know you know the feeling. I mean, all our fans know the feeling. It's like we've been waiting for it. I've only been here three years, but um, it's just a special place and it's I mean, I haven't even been able to walk down the street for the last four days. I have to stay in my room because our fans have taken over the city. And um, the expectations and all the great players for years after years that have played here, um, to bring home the trophy is just – it's just awesome. I mean, I know it's simple words, but <clears throat> – um, and, and Jake Mangum, you know, he's a big part of this. You know, almost every player who put on the maroon and white, they have a piece of this trophy tonight because it's been built over years. Um, <clears throat> like I said earlier, Coach Polk built this many years ago, and um, fortunately we're able to capitalize on it tonight. Next question will be from Theo DeRosa. And you, Coach Theo DeRosa with the Commissioner's yeah, Badge. Right? You mentioned all those great players that got you to this point. What do, can you say about Will Bednar and his legacy here at Mississippi State after a night like tonight? Pretty amazing. Um, you know, he had to get out of the first, but he had really good stuff. And um, we weren't sure. We were just trying to feel him out. And, um, man, he got stronger and stronger, and the innings got shorter and shorter in the middle of the game. And, um, I mean, he's coming in, and, and he is ready to go. And, well, I mean, just the opening game against Texas, just every time he's taken the ball here in the postseason, he's just been a champ. And uh, you need somebody to get hot for you in the postseason, and we had that with Will tonight. I'm looking forward to watching him and in the future in a big league clubhouse and a stadium. And um, I'm looking forward to this week's draft and, and watch where he goes. 
Next question will be from John Sokoloff. Chris, uh, forgive me if it's a little loud out here. There's a lot of uh, your fans. Forgive me if it's a little loud out here. There's a lot of your fans taking pictures outside of here. You know, everyone's just so happy. But for you specifically, what makes you the most emotional when thinking about this year's journey with this group? Ooh, man. It's been tough. It's It's been a tough personal year for me. I lost my mom in the fall. My dad's been sick all spring. He's been in the hospital for two weeks. So for me, the journey has been trying to hold all that together as these guys have played and done. My, our group is so resilient and so tough and so this short-term memory. They it, it hurts us in the classroom, but on the baseball field, it's good for us because they, um, you know, they just forget about the bad and keep on playing. And, and it's just, you know, you know, we can go back to Arkansas weekend or Missouri weekend or the SEC tourney and you look up and you're just devastated. And, and you know how much it means to our fans. I mean, we know that. And um, it means as much or more to us in the program. Um, but to come out on the on the backside with the trophy in hand, is it's, sur it's surreal at this point. Next question from Elizabeth Merrill. How hard was it to get – Will out of the game. It seemed like he wanted to stay in there forever, for forever, pretty much. You know, he was going to run back out there in the seventh, <clears throat> but the inning, that's the inning we had the big inning, and it just got too long. We just felt like he waited too long, and I think he realized that too. And we had a fresh Landon Sims with a nine run lead and nine outs to go. So um, making the smart move there is, is probably the, the smart thing to do. So he was okay at that point. I felt like I was going to have to rip it out of his hand at some point, but. When the game got expanded and we had that long inning, it was it was the right thing to do. Next question will be from David Murray. David Murray, Jeans Page 24-7. Coach, you've already mentioned how free the team played tonight. Yes, this is a very resilient group. They never take one game into the next game, but with all that's at stake, how do you credit the team and maybe even your staff as well for being so free when all the pressure in the world should be on them? You know, <clears throat> first of all, I have a tremendous staff, and, and they have their hands on the players every day just in terms of uh, motivating and everything else. But it's, it's almost crazy in a way that they just – they're always super loose. They're always joking. They're always laughing. They're always um, picking on each other. And, and it was like that today in BP. I mean, they're bouncing around the cage and trying to hit oppo jacks and, and laughing. And I think that's one thing that keeps us playing it the way we do. And – even Will Bednar, he came off in the fourth and he had made a PFP play. <clears throat> and um, I've been giving him a hard time because he missed one up in the regionals. And he came and sprinted right off the field, came to me and was right in my face, giving me a hard time. And um, they're just in the moment. It's something – I don't know if we're trained that way because we play in big moments so much, but tonight just didn't bother them. And no night has bothered them. They just – they come out and they enjoy playing the game in, in the biggest moments. <clears throat> Next question is from Michael Ferrara. Hi, Coach. Michael Ferrara here with Berg Sports Network. You, you mentioned remembering these seniors, this group. How are you going to remember them, and how should these fans remember this group from, like, 15, 20 years from now? Oh, the <clears throat> gritty, resilient. I mean, our, our journey is what I'll remember. Um, you remember the players, and it was, you know, I'm sitting there today in my hotel room, and I'm, I know I'm writing Tanner Allen's name down for the last time and Rowdy Jordan and Will Bednar, and um, it was hard. I got emotional in our team meeting um, just because I've enjoyed coaching them so much, enjoyed being on the journey with them, and um, you, you enjoy it. Just, it's just this team won't be together on the field again. I'm just glad that they can finish as legends. And when you go to Starkville, Mississippi, and um, you're around 20 years from now, it'll be a uh, – you know, they'll be remembered by everybody. Hey, we'll go back to Robbie Falk. Yeah, Chris, uh, the defense this year was kind of up and down. Y'all had some struggles early in the season, but y'all were never better than this week in the last couple of weeks here at the College World Series. No errors, and today some huge plays behind Will. Just how special did you feel like that group was this week to get you to this point and to ultimately help you get to the national championship? 
Yeah, the pressure plays all week, last week. Really, uh, the whole postseason. I don't know how many errors we've made in the postseason. I think my pitchers kicked a couple around, but the defenders, man, they've been awesome. I thought Braylon Skinner made a great play in the gap today, and um, they've been great. I mean, they're, they're talented. We struggled a little bit. We had to figure our way out a little bit early. Um, Cameron James had to work on some things, and um, but, man, he's he played unbelievable and played with such confidence. I just – Lane Forsyth's one of the best shortstops in the country. It's just – it is what it is in terms of daily just picking the ball. And Scotty DeBrule, he's a really high-level defender too. So you have some guys that have real talent, but they played at a really high level this week. Yeah, we're going to have time for two more questions. The first from Nick Suss. Chris, was there ever a point where you let yourself kind of gaze up at the scoreboard and savor the moment during the game today? With two outs in the ninth, <clears throat> I turn and cheese my – one of my coaches was sitting right beside me, and uh, we both lost parents in the last year. And I just, I turned to him and I said, "Man, I hope they have a good seat tonight." And um, that was kind of my moment. It, the lead was so big, we were able to relax a little bit. But um, I, I, I just, that's my only time during the game. I had to keep shaking my head. My old coach at the Citadel used to always tell me to shake your head in the big games and get the bad thoughts out because. You start thinking about celebrating or dogpiling, and then you get beat. So um, I try to stay pretty focused all night long, but that's kind of with two outs. Um, that was the one that hit me. Here, our final question for Coach tonight is from Theo DeRosa. Uh, Coach, you mentioned Landon Sims. I mean, he's been on the mound for pretty much every big win. Just what is it like to have a guy like that that you know you can turn to him and you know that he can be on the mound at the end of all of this? I mean, if you go back over the year – we gave him the ball in so many big moments, I don't think he ever lost the lead. Um, the only time he got hit is I put him in a blowout in the SEC tournament to get work, and it's the only time he got hit all year long. I mean, he has just been phenomenal, and he was phenomenal here. And really, you know, we didn't have to use him crazy, use him during the year. But, man, during this last month, he's had to take the ball a couple times when he's fatigued and he still just competes. And... I'm looking forward to – I'm glad we got him back for another year, and I know he's going to go play Team USA this summer. And But, uh, man, the year he had – I mean, if, if most pe people haven't had years like him in college baseball. And, and, and every time he pitches, it's just so much pressure. And he's performed every single time. Okay, Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you. Hey, can I say something real quick? Yes. Hey, I, I want to thank all our uh, – all our media is great, but we have this big group that covers us in Mississippi – and uh, we appreciate you. The stories you tell, um, the the articles you write, and the articles you write when we win, like a night like this, but also the professionalism you have when we lose and you still support us, and we, we appreciate you. Y'all have a good night, and I know you'll enjoy celebrating this one too. Y'all have a great night. Hell State.